All right, I'll call this meeting to order. I can please have a moment of silence. Flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, may we have the roll call, please? Mr. Calguire? Here. Ms. Darmo? Here. Mr. Dovey? Here. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Ms. Karen Nugian? Here. Mr. Litwack? Here. Mr. McLaughlin? Here. Ms. Tersich Keeley? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. May we please have the reading of statement of adequate notice? Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. By advertising the Brown and County Times in the Courier Post on September 9, 2021, posting notice on the school bulletin boards and main entrances, main entrances on September 9, 2021, posting the notice electronically in the district website on November 3, 2021, by following written notice of the clerk of the Lanco Township on September 9, 2021. Thank you. Do we have a public comment on an agenda item for the workshop session? I don't see any hands. Oh, oh. anybody? <laughs> oh, up there. There we go. Hello, Ms. Harper, please. You are free to speak. All right. Thank you. Now, I just, I have um, just a comment. Um, it, it's more of a, um, a thank you and an acknowledgement. Um, I, on behalf of the DTEA, as you know, I'm the proud president of that. Um, I want to thank um, Joe and for setting it up and Barry and John and Stephen Burns, they invited the DTEA to discuss um, the uses of the ARP funds and how, you know, some ideas, they allowed us to speak, they allowed us to share ideas. Um, and I do definitely wanna give a huge thank you to Stephen. Um, he explained it so that I could even understand it <laughs> as far as all of this money um, and just how he was looking, Steve, how you were showing us for the future and how to make our district so much more financially sound. And um, I just, I, I just want to thank the administration I know Joe uh, got it started for us. I had reached out to him and liked, you know, asked to be involved and the DTEA board was, and it, it really meant an awful lot to us. And also I just thank our administration and um, Mr. Burns for just making us feel as a part of it and taking the time to explain it to all of us. So I just wanted to say that. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you to our administration as well. Great team effort. Is there any additional comments that anybody has at this time? Marissa, I just wanted to reflect those comments back to Peg and say thank you to Peg and the DTA officers and all the DTA members for being part of that process in, in recent months and, and giving questions and comments uh, and the officers for participating in meetings about the ARP funds, because it's been a big issue, not an issue, but a big topic since March uh, when the funds were, were first announced. And, and the, the question, the looming question was, how are we going to spend these funds? And at that time, the DTEA asked to be involved and uh, we, we did get them involved in, in recent months. So uh, I'm definitely proud of that collaboration. So thank you, Peg. Awesome. Okay, I don't think I see any more. I can go back one more time. Okay, no, I don't see anything. All right, so then we're gonna move into the work session agenda, which is the presentation and it's the finance presentation. 
I'll close public comment on agenda items and go into the workshop session. Was, agenda. Was, oh, there, was there anything, yeah, excuse me, was there anything that came in uh, publicly before no. the meeting? No. Okay. Thank no. you. You're welcome. All right, Steve, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Just give me one second. Um, can everyone see that? Yes. Yes. Uh, so I wanted to, going back to Ms. Harper's comments, we wanted to kind of give sort of a, an intro to where we're going, which is basically the ARP grant. And just to the, you know, we talked about the fund balance. So I want, so what I wanted to give you is more information about where we are at currently with the 21-22 budget. And I'm, you're gonna see a lot of numbers. I'm gonna kind of highlight a few things for you just to kind of pinpoint things, but you're gonna see, I'll, I'll bring it all together during the presentation. So on the first slide, so what this says is you have the original budget, you have the adjusted budget. The original budget is the budget that was approved last May. The adjusted budget would be potentially transfers or other items. The difference, the difference column would be several different things. And then the, fund, the funds available is what's left over in those accounts. Let me back up for one second. The way public institutions work, just to make this very clear, when unlike, so when I go out to the food store, I bring cash and pay for it and it's done. With public institutions, we encumber the funds first. So for example, all salaries are encumbered right away. That's the first thing we do to make sure we can pay people. And then we input all the tuition contracts. We input all the trans input the transportation. We input other things. Everything goes in and encumbers the funds. So when I say funds are available of like 7,500, what I'm saying is that's what's left to be encumbered. It doesn't mean we spent all 1.8 million yet. Obviously we have not because the salaries are gonna be expended throughout the year and other expenses that have been encumbered. So I just wanna make sure that's clear. When we're talking about funds available, it's what has not been encumbered at this time. Not that that's really technically all that's left theoretically. It's just what we have not encumbered or what we don't plan to spend at this time of the year. So the one thing I want to point out is there's two lines in this first slide that kind of they may kind of I bolded on purpose. The special ed instructionals, you see that there's a difference of 126, and that may catch your eye. That is because of the expansion of the MD program. If you remember back in, I may have my dates wrong, but September, August, one of those months, we approved to use the extraordinary aid to start the MD program. That's what that additional salaries are right there. You can also see in the other bolded one, similar thing. When we did that, we had to obviously hire additional services for some of those, some of those students. Therefore, you saw an increase in that budgetary line. And that's why I just wanted to point those two out. Those are, those are big ticket items. But that was the MD program, which actually saved us money off the tuition line. So you can imagine for the amount of money that we're seeing, if we had five or six students on a tuition line, we would have seen that to be much bigger, bigger than those numbers. And so here, the last slide I want you is to point you to the totals column. If you look at the total original budget and then the adjusted budget, again, that's the difference of the extraordinary aid, some carryover purchase orders from last year, which occur every year. And it also incorporates um, the security grant that was approved two years ago, and finally, they're allowing us to actually expend the funds. So the, the funds available for the remainder of the year to encumber is 451,000. And I bring it up because we keep talking about fund balance, which I'm gonna to get to in a second. That number is low, it's, it's a very low number. This, this budget is extremely tight. And you know, like I said, I've, I've said this other times during these meetings, I've never seen a budget this tight. And obviously when I saw that number, when I started looking at this number, I do a monthly analysis of these numbers. I was like, wow, that's, that seems low. But I, but I will make you feel more relieved in a second. But I do want to point that number out. Right now, if we ended the year today, 
we would see four hundred and fifty one thousand dollars that have not been you know not been encumbered or expended in that regard. I always give the tuition costs. Again, in that four hundred fifty one thousand, we're still missing two contracts, and we still have six pending IEPs now versus five from last month. Uh, we are in the positive comment this month, but again, we still have some out, out, outstanding things that we need to get on there. Our fund balance. This is why I bring it up. Did, did, did you go back on that so we could look at that again before yeah, we move? I mean, forward? it's, yeah. But this is, this is a vital area that people should, should look at and try to understand exactly what we do and how we're doing it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same thing every year I, I uh, or not every year um, that I've provided the last couple of months just updated I think the one difference was the one difference was we had an other tuition line that I never included because I, I didn't I didn't even notice it, to be honest with you and then when I noticed it in there now that we charge something to it I put that in there so you can see the other line in there that's different but overall it's the same thing is there any extraordinary aid money that we can have access to? As I mentioned, we, did, we took that and used it for the MD program in the August or September meeting. Okay, but uh, going forward, I thought there was gonna be more money that the state was going to be releasing in that. No, I mean, the true aid payments were, 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 were higher than normal, I would say, but in regards to any additional funding that we already received now. Okay, thank, thank you. So the fund balance, so I want to kind of paint this picture. You had 1.5 in 1718, you had 1.3 in 1819. You can see it going down to 1.1, 1.2-ish, 1920. Went back up a little bit in 2021, and then the cliff just fell fell in 21-22, which is this year, which is where that big budgetary had happened. And then 22-23, from the auditors, we have a number of 1.4 million now that, we're, we're, that we'll talk about later on. But if you go back to the number I just gave you, again, we have to be cognizant of what's gonna happen in 23-24. And what we're looking at is we're gonna see potentially another dip in that fund balance. Cause it's almost like we're in, a, in this off cycle every other year we're having to we had one bad year a couple of years ago and it's, it's impacting at every other year cycle. So when I do monthly analysis, what I do is I look at the encumbered salaries and project to see if there's any surplus there. And I also take what's not encumbered and that's gonna be on the next slide. So for example, each month I take the salaries and project out if the salaries stay the same for that month what it would look like for the rest of the year and see if the salaries are on target or if we're actually seeing some surplus. Now, I would expect that salary number of 215,000 to probably decrease, whether it be sub costs, things of that nature that have not been seen as much yet. That's gonna probably be decreased, but the point is I do this every month. So if you look at our total fund balance right now, it looks like 667, which if you look at that, again, is low compared to what we're going to see next year. On that note, we still have to spend money for the rest of the year as well. So that's going to be even lower than that number, potentially. So here's our, obviously, your first question to me should be, so since the budget of fund balance is going to be projected to be lower, what are we doing? I must say, I have to give a lot of credit to the staff of this district. They are they are incredible at not spending money. I've never seen a district spend so little money. And uh, I got, I, 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 I almost feel bad at times where I'm like, I, I can't get, you know, we can't do things. But um, nevertheless, we're going to keep doing that and spending very minimal for the remainder of the year. The ARP, when we get to the ARP in the later slide, I'm going to discuss it. We're going to use some of those costs to try to beef up the fund balance so that we help 23, 24, because that's going to be needed. And obviously I'm gonna continue monitoring the tuitions and budgets like I do every month. I also lastly analyze the purchase orders from November 1st of last year through June 30th. Cause I was curious, how much do we spend from November 1st? And again, spend, I mean encumbered from November 1st through June 30th. 
Because when I saw that number of 450,000, my first concern was, okay, what does this mean for the rest of the year? We spent about 225,000 last year uh, after that date, roughly. So you can see, as long as no, no big, big tuitions come in, things of that nature, we should be okay for this year. But again, that fund balance is where my major concern is. So again, this, I'm gonna pick up where the last meeting left off now, last meeting being October. The recommendation of the fund balance. You're gonna see I changed the capital reserve to zero. I just, and I really, I look at things uh, and I'll always be, I'll always change my mind if I feel like the situation says differently. As much as I'd like to put in capital reserve, I don't think when we're looking at this budget that I can actually say to you that I would rather put $150,000 in capital reserve and not put it in the budget fund balance for next year because these budgets are tight and I'd rather have that extra security blanket. Um, I also feel like potentially, I know our bus and things of that nature are up. The bus will have to be replaced. If I, if I, I obviously 23, 24 does not look good. It may be, it may be have to be purchased out of, ne out of next year's budget. And if so, as a good one-time cost to spend uh, the fund balance on because it won't hurt future years. So that's things that I'm going to consider in the budget. Anyhow, technically speaking, all of these amounts of budget fund balance, I'm just breaking it apart so we have a good idea of what we're kind of using on a, on a regular basis each year versus what I'm trying to say, hopefully is a one-time cost that we can hopefully write off the books in future years. That's how I'm separating it here. So again, the expansion of special ed programs hopefully will go off the books because they'll start saving us money, which then would really help us. And then one-time cost, hopefully we can spend about 242,000 on one-time cost to help, help impact the current budget, you know, help impact the district and what they need. Again, we aren't on the budget. These are just nothing more than ideas right now and ideas change all the time. On that, on that note, what I do need from the board again is just a confirmation that we're okay with the $0 going into capital reserve because they have to notify the auditor so they can finish the audit. And I do need that tonight. Um, so I would need, if you want to move forward with that, I just need a confirmation, Not, nothing official, just simply, this usually happens in a finance committee meeting. Uh, people just kind of giving me the thumbs up. If that's, that, that's the way we want to move, we'll move forward with that. The do last, you, yeah, I'm sorry. Do you need a, uh, Rose, uh, somebody to make a motion? No, just, no, just informal. I just need to know that's what the board wants, wants me to okay. tell the auditors. Okay. Yeah, I like I couldn't, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Vera. I agree with your uh, recommendation. Thank you. I I also agree. Yeah, yeah makes sense to me too. Same. Four, yeah. Yes. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I think the one thing I want you to realize is I'm always analyzing things. And I've never, I'm never reluctant to uh, go back to the drawing board and change things. And this is, this is one of those instances where I feel more secure just these budgets are, are, are tough. I'm not, I'm not sugarcoating it. These budgets are tough. So I appreciate it. It helps me out, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So the ARP grant, it's similar, but there is some, some differences. So I try to color code it so it's easier to see. On the last meeting, the first four items were all discussed. And there really was no, dis it didn't sound like there's any disagreement. Basic skills is a needed thing. We have learning loss. We need to focus on the students getting back to where they need to be. And obviously that I think above all else is the most important thing in the grant. Stipends for lunch, as we discussed, I think back in one of, my, one of the initial meetings and then also last meeting, we obviously at this point need extra lunch periods. Now maybe that'll go away next year but we, we don't have a crystal ball. So we're budgeting for the next two years, having the additional stipends. That way we can we know for a fact that the lunches are covered. The extra custodian, again, part-time, just to try to get us some extra help while we're still heavily disinfecting. I'm hoping that two years from now, we're not in the same world that we are right now. But again, it might just, that might be a hope. Facility maintenance, just to plan for the unexpected. And 
I will say this money with the facility maintenance, I probably would try to hold off as much as possible to either help with the 23, 24 budget or the, to help boost our fund balance this year, to be honest. The next three items in red are items that we talked about the building subsidy of the last agenda, but the other two are to try to help with the fund balance this year and give the budget a little extra padding. And remember when I say extra padding, that actually means building fund balance for 23, 24. So if we're down to say 500,000, let's say we spend some money, we end up being around 400, 500,000. But we have these expenses here that we can, we can add to it. Now we're really at about 700,000. No, I'm sorry, almost 800,000, which almost puts us back to where we need to be. Will we be at 500,000? Probably not. But this money here, we have potentially $275,000 swing here where we can increase our fund balance and hopefully help balance it out a little bit. So it's not this 400,000, 1.4, 400,000, 1.4 kind of pattern that we're stuck in. And the ways that I made that money work was if you remember the last um, meeting, we discussed a grounds person, we discussed phones, we discussed all those kind of different items. Those items obviously counted for approximately, I don't have the number off the top of my head, but it, probably about 250 grand. You notice the last bolded item there has been reduced significantly. And obviously we'll have to prioritize things, but those items would not be purchased until 22, until we have a good idea of where the budget is for 23, 24, with the idea that if we need them for something, hopefully we can do an amendment and change it. So I wanna be, be very clear that those items would not, I'm not moving forward with those items like I normally would, would want to with a grant. They would be focused on HVAC, IAQ, and air quality, just technology upgrades such as we have to replace some smart boards. We need to do different things like that. So that's been definitely much more streamlined. Um, with this idea, it's we're still getting our probably our three top priorities, which, which are the top three items. But we're also building in ways of helping 21, 22 slash 23, 24, that budget fund balance with the facility maintenance, the building substitute, the out of district tuition cost of private school, the transportation contracts, all these items are going up. Uh, just to give you another idea, you know, these transportation contracts, we, will, they, we still have to find transportation for people. And we saw a last board meeting, one route costs 35,000. That's why, that's why we're putting that in there, just in case we keep getting hammered with transportation contracts. If not, we can also use it for 23, 24. Whatever funds are left off, left on those red items, we would not spend, in, our goal is not to spend in 22, 23, unless we absolutely needed to. And we would save it for the 23, 24 school year to help with that school year to try to offset the budget fund balance. Um, Stevie, can I ask a question? Yes, please. I'm sorry, uh, Vera, I don't mean to be looking into the camera. I, I'm, you're, you're very low, your, your volume is very okay. low. Can you hear me? I can hear you, I said I don't yeah. have my microphone today. Um, the basic skills teacher number is 130,000. Is that for two basic skills teachers? No, it's for one and a half years. So it's gonna be the second half of this year and then one, I bought, and then next year, sorry, <laughs> sorry. So next year, so it's about, if you estimate the salaries, 55 plus 30, around $85,000 for the teacher roughly for next year. And then the rest would go towards this year to help offset the cost to make it full time for this year. Okay. And the basic skills teacher we had, they're going to be the third grade teacher. So we are hiring a basic skills teacher. Is that correct? Joe, I mean, I'll speak for Joe and Joe, you can fill in the gaps here if I, if I misspeak. But yes, the teacher for the, we're, we're swap, the, the positions are swapping. And so we have to fill that position as well. Well, that's, yes. that's actually a separate scenario. We already have a teacher that does basic skills and other uh, curricular items. That teacher uh, is being transferred to grade three. And then we have somebody that's going to take on the current basic skills position uh, as a, like a long-term sub. This basic skills ARP funded is a separate scenario where we're, we're actually hiring a totally separate person. Yeah, this is additional. 
This is additional. Yes. So will we have two basic skills teachers finally, or what? once we get the new hire, the other person will not be doing that um, responsibility? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. I can hear your question, Vera. Your, your question includes two separate questions that I can't answer in, in one response. Yeah, I, I think what you're trying to get at is this is an additional position to what we have right yes. now. That's, um, that's the point. It's additional. Yeah, the, the current position, I don't know if it's completely, I have to check whether it's completely basic skills or not, but yes, the current position plus this position. Okay. The current Very position is, the current is, position is partly basic, basic skills. skills. I don't know. Okay. Currently, it's partly basic skills. Like I said, that's a separate scenario completely. This, what we're talking about with AR fund, ARP funds is a basic skills teacher for the remainder of the year. Uh, so yes, it's additional. Oh, super. Okay, please continue. Thank, thank you. Um, and if I uh, yeah. So the last thing again, there's four sub grants to the ARP grant. So it, it's that's why you see it this way. Whereas like the other, the last slide is like all one portion, all one sub grant, the bulk of it that can be used for various things, then there's four subgrants, and these are all curricular in nature. So the Accelerated Learning Coaching and Educator Support Grant, since I've been here, and, I, and I've, I've talked to many people on the curricular side, the INRS programs, people are all keep saying, we, we really are interested in, in expanding those programs. So that 51,000 over the next two years, 22, 23, and 23, 24, would help build those programs further, as well as provide professional development for all staff on those programs and how to utilize them if it, you know, effectively. So that's gonna be the bulk of the accelerated learning and coaching part of the grant. The summer learning and enrichment activities, as Joe mentioned at the last meeting, the SO2 funds already provided some of this. So these programs, would be provided for summer of 2022 and 23. And we discussed both the use of potentially some outside vendors as well as in-district personnel activities. Uh, so we would love to have personnel in districts who would maybe want to teach a course for two weeks on something, you know, something that would be, I think the best word there is enrichment. Something that might be not, I'm, I'm used to high school, as a high school teacher, so I apologize. Like maybe do a little mini thing on, you know, rocketry. Or something of that nature. So these things would be focused, and we would look to use vendors as well as industry personnel to, to make sure that we are utilizing and providing some opportunities for students. Uh, beyond the school day, that would be used for one on one tutoring. So going back to Vera's question, we have the basic skills program, but we also have $40,000 for one to one tutoring. So it's, it goes even beyond, like, so we can even use these funds for that. So there's gonna be more than just a basic skills teacher on that end. There's also gonna be funds used for tutoring and further enrichment after the school. And then I think the one that is probably the most important, I hate, I hate, everything's important here, but I think we we're all seeing it from the littles of, of students to our staff. Uh, the mental health, um, is, 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 is one of the biggest concerns, not just in our district, but I think, you know, kind of, you know nationwide. And our goal is to increase the part-time counselor at Walnut to as close to full-time as possible, if not full-time for the next two years. And I say that because I got to figure out the exact amount that will, that, will, that, that will be. It's not easy because part of it depends on how the budget looks for 22, 23. So I'm trying to put part of it in that budget. So that's why I can't say it's exactly how much, but we are going to increase the part-time counselor's hours uh, for both the remainder of this year and 22-23, um, and hopefully make it full-time. That's the hope. Um, Stephen, can I make a comment? Yes. Yeah. So for the Acer Accelerated Learning Coaching and Educator Support Grant, um, I, if possible, I would prefer to see that money put into um, more like hiring more uh, classroom aides or tutoring, 
you know, being a participant for years and years in uh, professional development, um, just based on my experience, I think putting, if possible, putting that money into something that would get directly to the students is more beneficial. Is that possible or is that- It's possible? not. So if you, look at, if you look at the grant as a whole for a second, right? There's like the generic, any, you know, various uses in the first part. These are very specific on what you can use it for. And if you look at just the name itself, coaching and educator support, and what, what they're keying at is professional development. And actually, if you read the, um, I'm blanking here on the title, on the title, on the, there's a screen, a tab in the platform you have to fill out. We had to put the details. It really focuses on the INRS programs, which is actually one of the focuses for this district right now. So I understand your point. And as a teacher, I, I, I agree. If we had, if we had, you know, all this is one pot, would we use it a little bit differently? Potentially. Uh, would, we, would we be able to use it some other, some, help some other way and reduce it a little bit, even though it's still needed? We probably could reduce it, but these funds have to be used for professional development slash, uh, you know, coaching type environments. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, so yeah, so we don't have the option of hiring staff on this part. So it might, it might be good just to say a few words on what INRF stands for for the non-educators. Yeah, intervention and referral services. Um, and, 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 you know, going back here, we did discuss potentially using this to help get more staff involved. We thought about potentially offering, again, none of this is official, but maybe like a stipend for people to be involved in it. So it would, it would be to try to help build these programs in a really um, professional, not that it's not professional now. The plan when we discussed it is to really have a cohesive idea here and to really put significant progress and funds behind here to really build and take the time to build these programs. So I do think the INRS program, Inter Intervention and Referral Services, if you build it really well, this could have a couple of different impacts. One, it could also reduce special education costs, potentially. Uh, I've seen that when I was a math teacher, and, you know, in my previous life, I guess. Uh, we were able to combat issues in the INRS program itself, and therefore able to, to get it resolved sooner and be able to address it before further things were needed. So anyhow, what it is, and I'm sure Joe could give a better explanation, but, but basically, if, you're, if your child or if you're, you know, the student is struggling, you, you can be referred to this to IRS where they can put a plan in place to try to put some efforts back into, put some measures in place to help refocus or help the student improve in those areas where they're struggling to get them back on, on track. Uh, it's important to note, it is not special education though. It is a, a measure to help students and mediate issues that come up in the academic environment. And there's different tiers to it based on the level of severity of what's going on with the student. So anyhow, basically you have a committee, they meet, they look at the, the different evidence, they talk to people and they come up with a plan for the child. That's basically what, what they do in a, in a nutshell, in a very uh, small nutshell. Um, Joe, I don't know if you wanna add anything to that. Nothing to add, you did a nice job, Steve. Thank you. It's <laughs> been a couple of years since I've done my <laughs> IRS work. Marissa? Uh, oh, no, no, anything. Um, I, I can't say enough for this plan. And I, again, going back to Ms. Harper's comments, a lot of thought went into this. And I think, you can, I hope this presentation shows that it's not haphazard put together. When you're talking about two budget years away, because I'm concerned about it, that's a lot of thought. And it's not just me, I'm just saying, but that we really did put a lot of, of thought into this together and, and try to come up with an idea to both help the district long-term, as well as try to fund things we really, really need right now. And I'm really proud of this plan. And um, I, I really think it's, given, given our budgetary issues, it's a good balance 
of using it for things we need, as well as trying to protect future things as well. I agree. I agree. It's a great presentation, very detailed, very easy to understand. And I think it provides us a really clear picture of what to expect moving forward and how to prepare for it. And I appreciate that. Appreciate it. And I will, I always do this analysis monthly. I'm not saying I'm going to give it to the board monthly because I don't think you, I don't think you want to see it monthly, but if something happens that changes it, I will definitely show the board uh, when if things are looking extremely different. Um, so, you know, I would definitely share that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great. So now we'll start the discussion in regards to the draft agenda for the November 17th meeting. Mar Marissa, before we move on, could I just make a comment about Steve's presentation? For sure you can. Thank you. So uh, Steve and, and the board, I, I just wanted to say that the presentations that we've had monthly since Steve started, I hope the board appreciates that. Uh, I hope the board understands that. You know, we've, we've heard for a number of years about transparency and the need for more transparency, especially when it comes to finances. So um, this is something that Steve took on. He took the bull by the horns the moment he arrived. And we, I think within the first week when we were meeting, he said, I want to give monthly monthly finance or uh, budget and finance presentations to the board. And I said, Steve, go with it because that will help the board and help the public understand exactly what's happening in our budget. And it's not going to be some kind of, even though it is difficult to understand if you, if you don't have a CPA license or you're not a, a school business administrator, Steve, like Peg said earlier, makes it easier to understand. Uh, so Steve, thank you very much for doing that. Thanks, Joe. And just so everyone realizes, I'm talking about this year's budget today. Probably in December and January, we're going to be switching to next year's budget, which is exciting and always a little scary at the same time. But uh, <laughs> we're going to be heading in over the next couple of months. And you're going to see a little bit different. And what I'd like to do is give you little bits of it. So we don't talk about the whole thing all at once. Because it can be overwhelming. So, anyway, Make thank it more you. palatable. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Harry, you wanted to speak? Take yourself off mute. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was good the way that people are starting to get the big picture that budgets are both have dedicated areas that have to be spent certain ways categorically it's not a general fund and you know and sometimes people make that mistake of thinking it's how you do your home finances you have x amount you spend this and that but under the rules and regulations guidelines etc there are certain funds that are dedicated and it does, you just can't use them for anything that's how, how districts get in, and people get into trouble so i think uh it's nice the way you're presenting it, Steve, and you know it gives us a, a skeleton to grow into financially and try to rectify where we are going forward to have some sort of stabilization. So thank you for the hard work and thank the uh, DTE and DT, DTEA and everyone for working together because that's the only way we're going to accomplish uh, Going forward, it's not a, it's not a mystery anymore. So let's just all work together and uh, push in the same direction. With Harry, trust. I appreciate you saying that because when you see a bill list of seven hundred thousand dollars, I just said there was only six hundred and fifty thousand left potentially, right? But then we got to remember that's because the funds have already been encumbered, right? So so I need you. I need. I just want you to realize that. When you go on the bill list, most of those expenses are not new. They were already allocated. So when I give you that number, I'm saying new expenses, meaning Joe comes to me tomorrow and says, we need this, we buy. Or if, or if you know, Walnut, you know, comes to me and says, they need this, I buy new expenses. 
And so I just want you to make that, make that realization. Also, that was the operating budget. You mentioned funds, Harry. You're absolutely right. I wasn't talking about grants. I wasn't talking about any of those other items. I was talking just about the operating budget for the general items of our district. So when you see the bill list, you're getting all the grants. You're getting all of those items incorporated in that. So it's important to realize we can have an $800,000 bill list for the rest of the month, rest of the year. That number may not go down much. So it's that's why I got to keep tabs yeah. on monthly though. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the folks that are in the schools and on the ground, the teachers and the administration working together answers those questions because they see the needs. They see where to, you know, to move. You're, you, you know, it's a chess game. Um, and that's one of the things that's difficult for some people to grasp is that the continuity from one budget year to another. And then New Jersey confuses it even further with having the school budget different than the state, everything else budget. So, you know, where we're on a, a July 1st to June 30th, they're on a, you know, January 1st to December 31st. So it's educating everyone so that maybe some of the questions and problems that have existed will be answered. So thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Great. Thank you. Okay, does um, obviously the first five aspects of the agenda for next week are generic and are exactly what we do each week. The so, part of Marissa, I'm sorry to interrupt about the agenda that's in the folder uh, that has updated since I, I, I sent a message to the board about a couple of updates that were going to be happening, but they're actually not on that version yet. So Steve and I are working on that. That'll, that'll be in that folder with the updates. I will have probably honestly, so I'll probably be putting it in there after this meeting. Okay. Actually, you know what, Steve? I can download it from the file right now and add it now if you think that'll work. If you want, I, I just don't want to, because they can't be PN in, I don't want to mess up my process. But yeah, you, good point. Yeah, all of the files say Steve Burns, Steve Burns. So, you know, if one says Joe Mersinger, we don't want to. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not kidding. Personnel There's, items that we just. No, I know, and those those are your files. I don't want to mess up your files. That's what I'm saying. So I totally get it. Yeah, I'll do it either first thing. I'll do it after this meeting, depending on when we end, or first thing tomorrow morning. I'll be in there, and it's all what Joe mentioned on his emails. They're only personnel items. Yeah, it's it's personnel items only. Yes. Perfect. All right, does anybody have any questions in regards to the approval of the minutes for October 13th, 2021 regular meeting, October 20th, 2021 regular meeting, October 20th, 2021 executive session one and two? No, all right. Does anyone have anything to bring up in regards to the reports of the board secretary and treasurer for September 2021, which are in agreement, exhibit E? Does anyone have anything specific to note for the community liaison aspect of the agenda? All right. Yes, Marissa. Uh, so we, yes. we received word back from Riverside. I think Cameron was in on that too, uh, that Alicia Espinal, who graduated from Walnut a couple of years ago, she is the representative from Riverside. And they said that she was going to be participating on November 17th so we will have a high school rep great thank you all right the welcome the student recognition the public comment aspect aspect does anybody have any questions in regard to the superintendent's report letters a through e and then sub letters a through d as well well actually a through f sub letters okay. Does anyone have any questions in regard to the instruction and program aspect of the agenda regarding exhibit K? It's confidential. Okay, have anything related to the budget and finance aspect of the agenda, of the agenda letters A through J? I have a question on letter J. Mm -hmm. Contract with Dr. L. Haynes and Associates for homebound instruction. Um, I'm wondering why sometimes we 
use regular um, teachers for homebound instruction. Sometimes we hire people, uh, just individuals, and now we're going with a company. So what is behind the differences there? All right, I actually, I think that's a really good question, Vera. And so for the sake of the board and everyone here. So um, over the past few months, we've had a number of homebound instruction needs. Uh, this is for students who were unable to attend school for some reason. And typically this impacts students in out of district placements. So for example, this is just an example. If a student is placed in another district like special services, but the placement isn't going to happen for another two weeks because we can't get transportation. That child is still entitled to be educated during those two weeks, but we have no way of educating them without providing some kind of homebound instruction. But what happens too is the homebound instruction becomes delayed because we can't necessarily get a teacher in place that quickly. So what happens is they will get some kind of compensatory homebound instruction uh, based on uh, five hours per week for general education students and 10 hours per week for students with IEPs. So that's, that's just the, the general scenario that's, that could happen. So when it comes to our homebound instruction needs, we currently have uh, four students that we've been arranging homebound instruction for, uh, one of whom we were able to arrange with Delanco teachers, another of whom we're arranging with teachers in their new placement, and that's actually on the agenda for personnel. Uh, another of whom we have not been able to find any teachers for yet. And so this company saw our posting and reached out and Steve and I have been working with the company uh, on that contract. And then we have a fourth student now that just came about over the, over the past week that also will need some homebound instruction. So uh, we do have teachers in Delanco that want these opportunities, but as we've said before, uh, you know, this situation with COVID-19, with all the new requirements, with a lot of the work that's being done, I mean, pe people are pushing themselves to the limit and oftentimes people aren't able to take on more. Uh, and, and I understand that. So what happens is, you know, teachers in our district will take on more, but they, they can only go so far. So we need to seek out other sources at times. As a follow-up, so in that, just that example, that was just an example, but in that example of an out-of-district placement where you couldn't get transportation, so the student still needed instruction, would we then be paying for that homebound instruction plus the full tuition? Like, in other words, we had to pay twice because of the transportation problem? Well, we, we would pay to educate the student for what they're entitled to. So when you say full tuition, we would pay prorated tuition if the student isn't going. Like let's say for example, a student didn't go to school for September and October because we didn't have transportation. We would pay a prorated tuition for that rather than full tuition. And then we would pay a, a teacher to do the homebound instruction, the compensatory instruction for September and October. So no, it's, it's, it's not really a double paying for their education we are paying for what they're entitled to. Also with the, this um, company for the homebound instruction, um, maybe this was like a time sensitive thing, but in the future, would you put something like this out for bid? Steve and I talked about that. Um, I, and based on what Steve and I discussed, I believe it's below the bid threshold, but Steve, you could provide more details about that. Yeah, yeah. basically there's, the bid threshold is forty-four thousand. Uh, how does? Well, I hope we don't come anywhere close to that. Uh, right now, the projected expenditures—I forget exactly what the exact number uh, is, Joe. But I believe it was well under three thousand. So maybe twenty-five hundred. So there's no need to go out. There's no need to go out to bid or RFP for it because of that. Uh, if we was, ever were to yeah. have a need, let's pretend in a different world. Of your, that we were planning on doing this for every single homebound person, then it'd be a little lot different. But obviously, we're not trying right now. We have one student who needs it, and that's what we're using it for. Okay, thanks. Um, and, and the cost, Steve, I just did the math for that one student we're talking about, is almost $2,200. Yeah. So that's not close to the bid threshold. Exactly. 
question is on letter H. Where I, I noticed that the. I, Can you hear me? Letter I think Vera H. was still talking. Could you uh, ask how, yeah. me what that is, the E-rate services for letter H? E-rate is a federal, oh. I'm going to call it a federal grant just for simplicity purposes. It's for technology. Basically what happens is we are able to get things at a discounted rate. So of course you hire someone to do that and however much money they save you, they take a portion of that percentage. So let's pretend they save you $5,000. They may, they, they take a certain portion of that $5,000. For example, I'll give you a great example of the E-rate. E-rate was related to our vendor that we use for E-rate. We just purchased, and my memory is going, I want to say 50 laptops and, not laptops, Chromebooks, maybe 90. And it costs 30000 but we're getting every single dollar of that back. So imagine you pay the company a percentage of that, but you're getting $30,000 worth of goods. Now, normally it's not like that. That's not normal. Normally you, you save like 40% or 60% depending on, the, it depends on, the, on, the, on how they classify your district. But basically it's like a grant and districts generally use a company because the paperwork is pretty substantial and they, they pretty much coordinate with the people who they need to coordinate with and getting the forms done and coordinate with the district. But they only get paid if they actually are utilized. Okay, thank you. Those were my questions for the budget and finance. Thank you, Vera. Uh, Harry, do you have anything you wanted to speak about? Yes, um, the company, I noticed they were from Pompton Plains, which is in Northern New Jersey. How, uh, do they have a, a Southern division or are they just utilizing people like an agency would hiring them and then subcontracting them out. Do you have any idea? Yes, they have local staff members, uh, but also uh, in this case, the, the instructions being provided virtually. So even if their staff member was somewhere else in, in the country or even on the planet, they would be able to do it virtually. So, but they do actually have local members of Burlington County that if we were doing an in-home, mm -hmm. Uh, then th they would have that person do that. And they don't do that from the um, ER, uh, from the ETC? Do they have anything like that? E which ETC? From, where we get, well, from the, where we're getting our special services. Yes. Oh, yes, oh yes. you mean ES, you mean ESU. So no, ESU does not provide homebound instruction teachers. Because we, we actually approached them with that before, and they don't provide that. Yeah, no, I'm just curious, because if it's all homebound, yeah, you can do it from anywhere. Surprising that they don't do that. If, it's, if we're talking about home instruction that is virtually provided, it isn't physically. It, it, am I under the understanding now that all home instruction is provided um, virtually? We no, we have some that's happening in the home and we have some that's happening virtually. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, you know, that uh, it, it even remember like years ago, it was in Del Ran and Del Ran was responsible for home instruction for Holy Cross students because they were in Del Ran Township and had to provide, you know, the home instruction for various uh, situations. Okay, I was just curious, when I saw Pompton Plains, I'm going, how are they doing that? But uh, they're just offering a service. There's no uh, no one in South Jersey who does that? I'm just curious. I'm, I'm just curious, I would think that- uh, there, there are organizations there out there. Be. I mean, the fact that we have a contract with them, by the way, does not mean that we're utilizing them for every single situation. This is a contract. Okay. No, that's what I, when I know, read the contract, on... I looked at it was these are the terms of, but we're not guaranteeing them anything. And they're not guaranteeing, they're guaranteeing us if we have a need, they'll fulfill it. But 
I think we also need to do follow up on that to make sure, because normally that's just the instructor turning in hours to a supervisor who's going to be billing the district. So, I don't, I don't want to assume I, it's taking place, but I understand what you mean. Uh, this company is going to have 36 hours of service they're providing us, and and that's that's it at yeah. the moment. Yeah, and they no, are they, they are they they responded. They've been communicating with us very clearly. Uh, that's I mean these are all important things that various steps that we've taken that that we see that they seem to be running a very good business. So and, and not only that, but uh, required background checks are conducted. So you know these are all things that we make sure that proper vetting is taking place and that the staff members yeah. they're hiring are actually certified for what they're supposed to be doing. I mean, I would hope that they're a legitimate company and if, are they dealing with any other schools, you know, in South Jersey? I'm, I'm not aware of their client list. No, I just know that we put out a posting this company reached out to us in a New Jersey based company because this was on NJ school jobs. And I yeah. said, well, I said, how did you hear about our, our need for homebound instruction? They said, well, it was on NJ school jobs and we, you know, we thought we could help out. I said, okay. And we started communicating with them. Okay. Nice. No, that's fine. I know that there's other companies in South Jersey who do all kinds of, you know, different services for hire. So. Yeah, see how it goes. It's 36 hours. It's not a long-term commitment and it's short-term, you know, homebound instruction, except it can get to be long-term as well. So hopefully they'll have some good instructors. Okay. That's my comment. Thank you, Harry. Operations facilities. Uh, does anyone have anything that they would like to bring up in regards to the exhibit U? Okay, the policy, um, this part, I'm not sure if anybody was, uh, there was a quite a bit, 100 and almost like 50 some pages, I think of policy that were in our folders to review. Uh, does anybody have any questions in regards to the second reading and the first reading that are addressed here under policy? And, and Marissa, I would understand if board members absolutely need more time. I needed more time. And that's, Steve and I talked about it, you know, we just, we get um, so many tasks on our plate and I, I needed more time to review the policies and make sure I put my annotations and shared it with the board. But I understand if board members meet, need more time to review everything with policies. What I can say though is uh, for the most part, if you look at that, you know, I put okay on a lot of, basically just saying that we're, I'm recommending that we accept the language provided by Strauss Sessman. In some cases, there are choices that are made uh, in some cases, we're just keeping the language we already have, and there's literally a couple of words in bold that are changed by Strauss Esme, so really depends on the policy. Okay, very good. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. I feel the same, the same way that I, I know I need more time. I've been going through that, and I had there's some, uh, just some of the language needs to be cleaned up a little bit in a couple areas that um it might be a good idea to have our legal folks look at some of the things we're changing because they are um the language the whole purpose of it is to clarify the language so that um we know exactly what it means and there are a couple of places in the, in the language and i i've notated them for myself but i need more time to go over some of the, the other stuff looked pretty good because at one point i thought oh it's just these first couple pages and I, my uh, computer saw me couldn't preview file. There was a problem loading more pages. So I see the front page, but then I can't get behind them unless I'm using the lab, uh, the tablet, which I'm using for the meeting. So I can't go to it, but um, yeah. I need, I know I would like more time. And also it would be good if we um, maybe instead of like, 131 pages at a time we just you know uh looked at areas where we had a where we know we have to look at or say okay we're going to break it up into looking at 
these changes or the first you know half and then the second hey, half. this this is broken up i have helpful. two more packets of 100 pages that i haven't oh. i haven't uh dumped onto the board yet and that's the thing like these packets I and we need to get <laughs> caught up on some of these updates and some of them are just yeah. the basic updates that they're changing literally changing a few words yeah here. yeah that's... some of them are less basic but each packet has a number of things. Sometimes it's abolished, abolishing a policy. Sometimes it's revising it. In the most recent packet, they took the wording from the regulation and policy and kind of reversed it because the policy should be brief and the regulation should be more detailed. I mean, some of these things are just basic policy management issues that they're dealing with. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, there are still two other packets to go that I want to make sure the board gets caught up on. So I have no desire to rush anything. It's just a matter of that's why we're doing packets at this pace so that the board, number one, has a chance to do a first reading basically each month for the next few months, and then we should be caught up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That, that explains it perfectly for me. because I, And I, I think we need to seriously, if we're doing these uh, you know, policy changes, make sure that everyone understands what they are, the meaning of it going forward. And there isn't a rush, so that, that's good. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Harry. Personnel, does anyone have anything to um, discuss in regards to letters A through F, understanding that F is still outstanding at this point in time, but will be addressed forthcoming? Um, I have a question on letter D and C. Of these uh, two homebound instruction instruction teachers, are these certified teachers? I, I can't hear Vera. I... Are those certified teachers for letters B and C? Thank you. Yes, we wouldn't we wouldn't legally be able to hire them unless they were. These are teachers that work in another district, as I mentioned earlier. So we have teachers from Delanco that were approved for homebound. Now these teachers are approved for homebound, and then also the company. Um, okay. Um, okay, those are all my questions. Thank you. All right. So just, uh, Marissa, just to add for the board, just verbally, because you will be getting the updated agenda tomorrow, as Steve mentioned, or, or tonight, uh, there is that transfer that was mentioned in email. Uh, and because of that transfer, we're going to put a long-term sub in the basic skills role that we have right now. It's, it's, that's not the role that's funded by ARP. And then we also have a leave of absence that, that's going to be on the revised agenda that we just became aware of over the past couple of days. And then, of course, the hiring of the other basic skills teacher, which uh, interviews are going to be conducted soon for that position. Great, thank you. Does anyone have anything that they want to discuss in regards to the board liaison reports? Anything that's important today that cannot be brought up next week? If not- I don't have anything, no. Okay, awesome, thank you, thank you. Um, the old business, new business distributions, we can um, discuss them once we get out of the agenda. I think that's kind of a good time to do it. Don't you think we can jump into that after this? Um, and then of course the public comment aspect of the meeting. And then we have the executive session portion of the meeting where we will discuss district goals for the 2021-2022 um, year, exhibit Y again, that's highlighted to reference the point that these will be forthcoming. I think that we received an email about that information today. And again, the um, superintendent's report in regards to those district goals once we discuss them and approve of them. Uh, Marissa, I have an old business. Okay, so we're gonna jump into old business once I get done this agenda. So absolutely, that's great. So if there's nothing further of this agenda to speak on, we can move into old business for sure. All right, let's move into old business. Vera, what did you want to discuss in old business? This is super old business, but I, <laughs> um, when I um, approached that, when I was talking to the county executive superintendent about the ESL 
issue and if ESL students should be seen every single day. Um, mm -hmm. He told me to ask our lawyer about it and I never did ask her directly. So I could just ask this through an email, but then you're right, um, Ms. Guerin's right here and if she needs to research it, she can always get back to me for the next meeting. So Ms. Guerin- um, Plus there are, there are other board members, Vera. We're in, we're entitled I'm to the I'm same information. About, you're asking- I'm asking about something that the executive- You're asking about, you want to use the lawyer asking, to get information for you. It's information for the whole for board. The board. Yeah, for the board to know. This is a question for the board to know. Um, we have ESL students and before, maybe it's changed, but before they, they were not all being seen every day. And I believe legally they are to be seen every day. Um, Ms. Guerin, could you get back to me or get back to the board next week on that issue, if you could? Sure, I, I don't know the answer off the top of my head. That is something I'd have to look into. Um, and if there is a specific, um, and, and if you wouldn't mind uh, through Mr. Mershinger sending me an email just with a little bit of context. It feels like sort of a, a question without context. Like, how does it come up? Is there a situation? Why Why is the county executive even involved at all? A little context would be helpful, but I will gladly get back to the board. Okay. Amy, if you have a response that you could send to Marissa, Harry, and me, then I can filter that to the full board. Sure. I, like I said, I just I, I don't know all the regulations off the top of my head. Um, that is something I'll have to get some research again on. I, I would assume in those situations where, because there's terrible shortages of ESL teachers all around the state and country, that there's um, kind of a, this is the best we can do, we're doing the best we can do, that it's um, situational, it's not with intent to uh, deny any their mm -hmm. educational rights, but you, you know, that's what the requirement yeah. is. I think yeah, question yeah, number yeah, one yeah, is, yeah. what is the requirement? Mm -hmm. But there is a national ESL shortage of teachers that's one of the areas. Thank you. All right, so the other aspect of old business that we have noted on this uh, workshop agenda would be the virtual meeting slash hybrid discussion. We mentioned a couple months ago that we would like to revisit this in November and here we are in November, it's come so quickly. And where do we stand with this? Uh, where do we wanna go with this? Do we wanna maintain this type of situation that we're in right now, or do we want to try to get back into some type of in-person hybrid type meeting where we have our workshop sessions virtually yet our in-person voting sessions in person? Where do we, what is our, what is our uh, temperature with this at this point in time? Um, I can look and try to find each of us and ask that question. Vera, uh, you're top of, you're on the top of the cubes. So what would you like to, to add to this? I'm a teacher, so I'm going in every day to my school. Um, I haven't had any sick days. I feel great. Um, my school ha doesn't have any big outbreaks or anything. So I'm not nervous about coming into in-person. I've always said my concern is I would like meetings to be on video. And that's the main reason I like Zoom at this point, because I am comfortable with any risk. I've had a booster shot. I don't feel nervous at all about going in. So um, I like if if people really want to do in person and and video is a problem, I'll just video my portion of the meeting like video myself. You know what I mean? So if, if there's a strong feeling to go in person, I can accommodate that. Okay, thank you, Steve. Yeah, I feel very similar to Vera. I'm not, you know, I'm vaccinated. I, I do have an unvaccinated kid, but I'm not, and I'm not that concerned about meeting, being in the same room. Um, but my big priority is making sure that these meetings are as accessible to the people of Delanco as possible. Mm -hmm. So right now we don't have an audio setup or, or a decent video setup for 
doing a hybrid or even doing a, a live stream of our meetings if we'd meet in person. So just for that reason alone, I think it makes the most sense right now to continue meeting via Zoom. And if we can you know, find some room in the, in the budget to, to get the proper audio set up, then th that would be the way to, to go back to meeting in person, I think. Thank you, Steve. Bob? I'm just curious, is it um, using the, uh, uh, the school board website or the school's website, if we ask the, uh, uh, for the residents to voice their opinion as to how they would like us to continue, whether we do this um, using Zoom or whether they would like us to be in person. I think it's a board. That's decision. not a, a even though it's a board. I, I, I know it's a board decision. I know it's a board decision. I'm just saying, you know, I'm hearing a lot of a number of people have told me they they prefer that we continue doing the Zoom meetings, which sort of goes against what I would like to see. But that that's you know we're here serving the uh, the residents and you know, we haven't involved their, I, I, I guess, their, their opinion as to how they would like to, us to continue, whether it's using Zoom meetings or whether it's in person. I don't find this to be a terrible idea. If we can put a survey out to ask for a response by next meeting. I don't know, Joe, if that's something that could be done um, prior, you know, to have this sent out to say, you know, what is the general consensus of where of how you feel the voting session for the school board meetings and again the student recognition por portion as well if those should be held in person or is the desire for them to be held virtually and have just those two options just for us to have that as part of our discussion and determine mm -hmm. so we can have a, a good idea of where everybody stands us and the community to have a really good way to provide informed you know decisions on how to proceed forward i, I can easily that with, say with tomorrow and, and have the data to the board before next meeting uh, is that well, before we're well, jumping woo woo I, woo slow down please folks folks I, please slow down i'm responding to marissa harry he, he, he was just i was just asking if that's a possibility we weren't doing it i'm just asking if it's a i'm saying i'm saying i, I can do that down. she asked if it's hey, possible the answer is yes i can through, do it as you haven't gone through every every board I know. member we i understand that every board member's opinion and i this understand is something that i want to bring up you know, but it's something that becomes problematic when we do this as a group often or too often which is when we're brainstorming or getting input some people are rushing to make a decision. And I think- So it's no, that's a misunderstanding. That's a misunderstanding your point uh, on your part. I was just asking if it's- um, a, a meeting, it's I a wasn't rushing meeting. to any decision. I was no, asking no, 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 after no, that no, comment, no, Harry, no, right after that comment, Harry, I was gonna say, Harry, what is your opinion? And then move on to Cameron and then move on to Catherine because that's how my list was going. I legitimately was just asking a question, nothing more than that. No, 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 I, I know. And I, well, I'm not challenging that. I'm saying the, 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 my thing is, okay, if we're gonna, and that would be the only two things, it, it would comment upon, that'll be the only two things we're asking them. And my question would be under those circumstances, are you going to me as a board member, are we talking about, having in-person meetings with or without masks because that's another question that some people have you'd have so to follow the, the cdc now, we'd, now, have to, we'd have to follow what the rules are no, no 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 we have to we have to follow what the board decides to do i believe well i think that we should follow in the school i, I don't disagree have to follow the guidelines that agree. were provided by the cdc but yeah and, and you have to follow the state executive orders which requires all people including board members to be masked while indoors. So if you decided to gather indoors, the board would be masked. That's okay. what I'm getting at. Thank you. Harry, did you have anything else that you wanted to um, add? Yeah, yeah, but I, you know, if I, well, I, 
I've had COVID and I'm a carrier, but I don't have it anymore. You don't mind if I show up at the meeting, right? I don't have COVID. I haven't had it. I've had my <laughs> shot. That's what I'm saying, with or without masks. And one of the things that I think we have to recognize as elected board members is that we make those decisions. The voting public gave us and said, hey, we elected you to the board to make these decisions. And yeah, I agree, we need to get input from the community, but it seems like any more in the world we live is just, yeah, um, people for this, almost 50% and people against it. So it, it um, at some point, it's just us saying, hey, this works for us now. And I would basically go and mask whether or not other people were. No, I totally understand that. And I would be masked as well. That's kind of where we stand with that. All right, thank you. Cameron, what is your point of view? Well, last month at Riverside's meeting, we had our first uh, student recognition session. And while it was on the lengthier side as expected, it was very nice to see the kids uh, elated and joyed about uh, receiving their awards and meeting with their building principals in public. So uh, I'd really like to see our Delanco students uh, have that look on their faces of joy and being in public since they're in school every day of the week uh, and at the public meetings. So I'd be happy to see us going back to public meetings for at least the voting sessions. Thank you. I'm going to jump to Catherine and Bob. I don't know. It's so crazy. You were on the screen twice. I don't know if it's the same for everyone else. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> oh no, that's that's the guy that gets me in trouble all the time. Okay, because yeah, I literally was like, Bob, no, we just did, Bob. He was over there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I but, don't ask me. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. It's been, I've been holding it in for like half the meeting because it's just been like, well, why is he over here twice? He's, but, he, but that's the guy that gets me in trouble all the time. Yep. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, sorry about that, Catherine. I'm sorry. Um, how do you feel? No, it's been unnerving because they they move at the same time. It's strange. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, uh, you know, ran for this position on a platform of transparency. So I think uh, and accessibility, and I think as much as possible, we should do that. So I actually am a really big fan, and it's actually. Also something that I had proposed before was to survey uh, our constituents and find out what they want. Um, so I love that idea. I think if we do go down that road, we should make it as clear as possible what we're saying. Cause I think based on conversations I've seen on various platforms, um, there's some confusion about what that would actually mean um, if we had an in-person meeting or if we stayed uh, in Zoom um, and that, basically hybrid isn't an option because I think there's just some gray area there. So I would love for that to be totally explicit on what that would look like if we are going to do that. Um, so yeah, that's where I stand. All right, awesome. And I think that was everybody. Um, I agree, I, I echo that. And I think that part of that, if we were to go in that direction to send a survey out, that we'd be very clear what the voting session would be like. So we would not be able to stream, like Stephen has said, the streaming capability is just not possible. Can we record it and post it? Yes, these things have been done previously. Uh, we can certainly explore yes, that. But it, well, we can record it and post it, but we don't have the proper audio set up. So it may or may not be audible. Correct. No, so we, you know, we would have to put that on there saying, you know, knowing that we don't have the highest level of technology to provide this best and clear, you know, sound is it still going to be okay because certainly you know we'd hate to go in this this direction and then the we'll say like harry said 50 percent was like yes let's do it and 50 percent were like no this is terrible and then we have the 50 percent that said yes say well that wasn't great because we couldn't hear you if we can put that as much information of what we know to be true out there so that everybody can make these informed you know, survey decisions, I think that truly is the best way to do it. You know, we definitely need to say, it'll just be the voting session only, not the workshop. Will not be streamed. However, you can still provide co public comment through the form, just like we've done previously. You can still have this recorded 
understanding that we don't have the best technology, but we will do our best with what we do have. Um, and then this will be provided as a recording, which will be found here, blah, blah, blah. Is this what you agree to or are in favor of? Or do you prefer us to maintain a virtual you know, presentation for both sessions, workshop and voting? How do we feel? Do we, do we feel that this is something we wanna do as a board? We'd like to see what the, the community feels, even, even with the assumption it could be divided 50 by, you know, 50, 50. Do we wanna kind of get an idea? I personally, I'll say because I, I didn't have a chance to say it as clearly as I want to, that is the direction I'd like to go in. I think that was a great idea. I do want to go back in person for the voting session, but surely I would, if our public strongly feels that the virtual aspect is the most beneficial and our board, the majority feel we are most beneficial in virtual, then that's the direction I would go. I'd support the majority but I would like a good idea of where our public stands with this. Now that the kids are back in school, our teachers are back in school, things, you know, the boosters have been, you know, also in free form. And now they've updated for vaccination for young children as well in some areas. So I'm feeling like we're moving in that direction. Do we want to put the feelers out there to see if the community is also in agreement with that? Uh, Marissa, when you say community, you're not just talking about parents, correct? Well, Joe, can you explain how you would send this out, please? Yes, I mean, the, the Blackboard Connect distribution list we have includes most, I mean, includes all staff members. It includes parents and other guardians. Uh, it, it's, it includes some other community members uh, that that work at the township level, such as the, the chief of police. Um, but we don't have a distribution list that includes every member of the community, no. So, um, so we would have to do something like maybe use a Facebook poll or mm -hmm. use uh, maybe no. a I think that what the township, they have their email list. Well, like we here, here's I my recommendation. And, and I just, this is, this is just my take on it over the past year and a half. I've seen more attendance at the virtual meetings than I've ever seen at any in-person meeting in eight years in Delanco. Now, this doesn't mean that in-person meetings aren't important. I just know that if we're if we're talking about transparency and access for individuals in the community, I just know the in-person meetings. They it, it's not that they didn't provide that, but they weren't as I guess it just wasn't as convenient for everybody. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here in my dining room. Everyone else is sitting here in their homes and, and participating in a board meeting. I think that's what the public, that's what I've heard from members of the community, that they, they actually love the virtual meetings. But again, that's not, that's not an official survey. That's not every of the community. But I, I agree with what everyone's saying, that providing access and transparency is important. I'm just concerned that if we were to go to in-person meetings, that, that, that there would be a pretty steep drop-off of those who are participating because we're really not going to have that hybrid option. I mean, it's it's... We would be creating a hybrid mess, to be quite honest, not 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 a clear hybrid option for anybody. So that's just my opinion of it based on what we currently have. I think yeah, that um, I, I, I understand that. And I think that what is a benefit that they didn't have, the community didn't have previously is this workshop session where we go through the agenda bit by bit, dissecting, we're asking questions, things that normally are not the normal process for the voting aspect of the agenda. So I feel like they're almost getting more by having the, the workshop session virtual as opposed to the voting session. Um, I totally understand what you said. However, I also feel that if the community is so inclined and they really want this, that they should, outside of a social media platform, they can reach out to us in the um, public, you know, the the document that we have virtually for them to provide comment. I True. think and and the survey could go on the website, Marissa. It, it so it would go out through Blackboard and reach about uh, 500 some recipients that are part of the district. But any other community member could go to the survey on the website because we've done that before. And so, but we just don't have all their email addresses and phone numbers and everything. I mean, but they can yeah, still okay. reach the website. Let me just follow up. I mean, I, I completely agree with you, Joe. That 
I mean, the attendance is much higher on these virtual meetings. And if we meet in person, there won't be, not only will there, there may not be a video at all, there certainly won't be a live stream. So, the, so for instance, in the, you know, the, the school district's YouTube account will be uh, work session, work session, work session. We won't have records of how we actually voted, which is the, the most important uh, part of this process. So I don't think a poll is necessary. We, we are elected officials. Um, I think that doing a poll of people in Delenco would would just tie our hands uh, for doing what we're you know what our responsibility, which is to figure out how to work together. Um, I think, and so I'm yeah, video I'm strongly video. in favor of remaining online. Yeah, no, I understand. Outside of the audio aspect, you know, I do believe that we can still videotape the voting session. We've done that in the past. That wasn't necessarily the biggest issue. It was more the um, audio and what we could and could not hear, like pristine. However, mm -hmm. I think that I'm not opposed to one giving that a shot, and two finding out if the community is for this or not. Like, do they? Is this even an issue to them? It may or may well, not. But, but this is what I'm saying: is we, there are, we already have a mechanism in place for the community to voice their feedback. They can send a written uh, note to the to the Board of Education before every meeting. They can speak during the public comment session. And I'm very interested to hear from people, but I don't see why we should, I think that setting, you know, if we if we send out this poll, we're just setting ourselves up for, for uh, you know, what, for, I think it's very likely that we'll end up going back in person and possibly regretting it, but our hands will be tied because we have this, the, these poll results. I, I'm just not, I'm not, not convinced that the, the Poll is going to do a better job of making a decision than we are as a, an elected body. I'm uh, that's I think the idea of reaching out to the uh, to the uh, residents of parents uh, is is sort of get, letting them know we're interested in what they have to say. We don't necessarily have to go along with that. Like you said, we're a board. We can you know we're empowered to make those decisions. Uh, but this way, at least we're, we're trying to open up communication with the parents and the, and the, you know, the, the residents of Delanco, uh, what, what do they think about this and, uh, which, which way would they like to go? It, that doesn't mean we're saying we will go that way. Um, but I'm, I'm just curious because I was surprised a little bit at, at the, people that have been talking to me and they like this format and they they say you know they're more you know they're more likely to watch what goes on real time or or one one of the uh, tape uh, uh, you know versions that show up I, I so I, I'm I'm really I'm just I'm just curious to know whether it's just the people I know or whether this is something that's that's uh, you know um, they're calling more, you now. They're calling you oh, now, Bob, to tell you. <laughs> no, no, this this is work. <laughs> so, but I think, in fact, let me let me decline his call. So, I mean, from my perspective, I I'm not I like I'm not interested in what ten percent of the population of Delanco has to say. I'm interested in what the population of Delanco has to say. So, I would prefer that if we are going to do a poll, we try to reach as many people as possible with it. Um, because otherwise I think you get like, for example, I know we're not doing this, but if we just post on Facebook, like there's a certain person who uses Facebook and there's a certain type of person who doesn't use Facebook. Um, so we're just gonna get skewed results if we do, if we just send it to a certain population of Delanco. So to me, I'd much rather figure out a way to do it where we send it out to the entire town. And if we can't do that, I think we should just make the best decision. And frankly, I think the, the attendance uh, kind of is a poll in itself. So I don't, you know, I don't know that it's hundred percent necessary. I think it would be nice to have, um, but yeah. I agree with Catherine. And also mm -hmm. I've heard um, some people say, oh, the attendance, it's mostly the board members and a couple teachers. I've heard that, but that doesn't take into account all the views that the official videos get and also um, Steve's unofficial videos get. So there's all those people watching when they have time. So um, I'm really gonna support what Catherine says. If we do wanna seek opinion, 
uh, it's got to be as widespread as we can, or else I think just the board should come to their own decision. Okay, here's an idea. I don't know if this is a solution or not. Like Joe had mentioned, we could do the Blackboard Connect. We could put the access to it on the um, website. Is there also a way on our board out in the front of the school that can kind of say, hey, are you interested in the school board? Like, is there some type of prompt that we can add to that, you know, electronic messaging system out front to gain more attention for people to go to the website? I don't know how quick and short it can be. I know it can't be like so wordy because who has, has the time to, to sit there and read the whole thing. But, you know, is there something that we can there put out there to prompt somebody to say, oh, let me go check the website. Maybe I do want to answer that website, that survey. Well, we I can think, definitely do it. Uh, the we can also have the, sorry, Bob, go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say uh, that we could put it on the township website. I'm sure they'd be happy to post it for us. That's also an option. I was going to ask the township to actually send it for us. So let's say we do have a survey. We have a link. It's on our website. You know, let's say the board agrees that a survey is what you want to do. And it gets created and we have the link. So the township, I believe, has some kind of email blast system as well. Yes. So I could ask Mike Templeton if, you know, if possible, it's, you know, they're not required to, but that could get more people access to that information too. And then they can also respond to the survey. I think that's that's a, a fine solution at the very least if that's the direction we want to go and it will provide us the best chance of capturing as many different viewpoints as possible, whether it be parents, community members outside of the school, things of that nature. I think that we have a better chance for sure hitting all three of those points, you know, whether it be Blackboard, the township last, the website, even something on the messaging board, possibly. I mean, we're really putting our best foot forward to gain as much information as possible. And then again, it could bring us back to the table where we, we just look at the data and just make informed decisions. You know, it doesn't have to be whatever the community says at the same point, it can be a, a decision to say, well, you know, while they want it, a lot of people said they don't, they're not comfortable with not being able to hear it either. So, you know, I think that that's going to be helpful, at least for me, I'd like to make a good decision. I'd like to be a good representative of not just um, the school, but also, you know, the parents of that of that child and all of which who want to hear this, the grandparents that may not get the Blackboard Connect or the neighbor that wants to support the school as well. So I'd like to be able to find a way to, to open that, open up that communication and put that off branch out there. Again, if it's not the majority it's not how we feel, but you know, by a majority, then that's fine too. I just want to tack on one final thing. I mean, I think I just suspect that the, the poll result, results might be skewed in some ways because of you know pe people who have uh, you know reliable internet access, for instance, and are you know very tech savvy are going to be more likely to respond and so on. Uh, and I really think that the, the possible outcome of this is that we have a majority. You know, if the, if the poll comes back that people want us to meet in person, well then, okay, a majority of, of people in this town have have just come to the decision that they're going to uh, deny access to the mi minority because, the, because there will be people who are left out, either parents who are too busy to come to a meeting in person, um, anyone who was you know, watching these videos and, and learning what's going on in the, in the school board. I mean, it's, you know, th those are the stakes. We're going to we will be putting up this poll, and if you vote yes, meet in person, then we're cutting off access and and a you know reliable record of these meetings. But so we're that, yeah. cutting off the access, and I would say not necessarily access because if they were watching virtually previously, they can go on and watch the video later. So whomever didn't have access before doesn't have access to these meetings either. Yeah, but, the, but the video is going to be terrible quality with audio that you can't hear. Perhaps. Be able to yes, I mean that this is the thing we don't have the tools. We're going to have to set up one microphone in the middle of a. A cafeteria or a gymnasium, the audio is going to be terrible. So nobody's going to want to. I mean, you can watch those videos if you're really dedicated, but we're going to lose the not only the live element, but but having a version that you can actually understand and follow what's happening in the meeting. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. I I just think that this workshop session that we have now is so much more detailed and informative, and basically mirrors, if not is more detailed than what our voting session would actually be like. 
the voting just yeah. voting on these things. And I think that that would be pretty clear. I mean, the we votes are in the minutes our hand up if we approve and put our hand down if we don't approve. And then, you know, we can have different things to help provide as much clarity as possible in the, in the voting session. But I do feel the workshop should remain virtual, in my opinion, only because I think that you're right. This is a super clear way to convey information, to discuss topics without a mask, without something stopping us from having deep conversations, whereas the voting session isn't necessarily for a lot of back and forth. It's more voting on what we've discussed at today's meeting. But there is still always discussion and oh, there can the, be. Way, yes, the absolutely. way people vote matters. So we want that for, to be on uh, the record. It, absolutely. And, I, and I'm not um, opposed to having, I mean, we will have a written record as well posted as we always do as to how the voting goes. We also will have this video one way or another voted um, or noted as well. I think that there's there are ways that we can try to make it work if we decide to as a group. I just I think that we should think about the different ideas, you know, the different opportunities that we have out there. And again, kind of get the temperature of where our community stands with this as well. I think oh, that, so you know, when you vote, when I vote, I do like to say why I voted a certain way. I don't want to just like raise my hand or have my hand down. I need to explain it in a short way. And um, before I was leaning more towards Marissa, your opinion, but I think when Steve said, even if the majority says in person with that's going to be poor audio, then it's, it's denying access to, um, even if it's a minority, it's denying them access and I don't feel comfortable doing that. So I'm going to have to revise my uh, statement and say a strong, I'm a strong supporter of keeping virtual. Okay. I think, I think that's an interesting point that Steve made about, you know, the majority may want, and we may, you know, a majority of the board may want to go back in person, but what is it at the expense of? And what is, what is it that we're giving up? Like, what are the pros and cons of both? And having like a detailed conversation at some point about, you know, what is negotiable and what is non-negotiable for us as far as what our goals are as a board um, and what, you know, which of those two options most weighs in the favor of those goals. Mm -hmm. Kathy, based on what you just said and what Stephen was saying and Vera, you know, I feel like I, I share a lot of the, the same thoughts about that simply because you know, we, we do live in a society where the tyranny of the majority exists. Uh, that's what democracy is, but that is inherently problematic to the minority who has a differing opinion. And not only that, the people who, the, the, the results we get from a survey, the, the reason we always have to take it with a grain of salt is that's who responded. Well, just because we had 20 people respond doesn't mean that those 20 people actually represent the views of the community. You know, so the surveys can always be, you know, potentially problematic in that area. So another thing, though, that's important to remember when it comes to uh, th this topic is that the board is conducting a meeting of the board that takes place in public. But the public, even though we can take their input, like like some board members are saying, like we, we don't necessarily have to go in that direction. That's that's it's the board's decision on how to conduct the board's meeting. And the member of the public, of course, we want them to have access, but it it's not the general public's decision how the the meeting is conducted. Correct. And like Bob said, it was more out of curiosity to kind of see what the temperature was of the community. But we don't have to go in that direction after yeah. we have more in-depth discussion about it or or today we don't even have to put the survey out you know it's whatever the majority feel I, i'm just i'm just curious because again the people i talked to i i thought that they uh, would have liked to have seen in person and they told me you know that this is more convenient mm -hmm. so they can they can be home in their pajamas watching it <laughs> you know i do uh, love your idea though bob of like opening up dialogue with the community. I don't know if this, you know, now that we've had this discussion, I feel like I don't know if this is the time to do that, but I do think it's something that we oh. should keep in our back pocket as, you know, something that we would like to do. I mean, that is, I think, part of my goals on the board is to make sure that we're engaging the community as a whole. Um, 
and something like that is is a great you know tool to use in the future. I I agree, Catherine, because at times we are limited with how we can communicate outside of this meeting here, and so I felt a great, like like you that this is an opportunity for us to kind of put feelers out there and just kind of say, hey, how do you feel? You know, where do you think things should go moving forward? It doesn't necessarily mean that that is the end all be all. It's just like let's see where people's people are with this, you know, idea, because we yeah. don't normally have the ability to kind of, to, to go on social media per se, because, you know, that's part of our tenants, you know, of what we should and shouldn't do. So this is an opportunity for us to kind of gauge what some people might feel about the situation. But like others have said, it may not be a true representation of the population. It may be skewed, but it may also provide us a little bit more information that maybe we weren't aware of either. You know, maybe like, you know, I could be gung ho. I say, yes, I want to go in person. I want blah, 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 blah. But then I see the community is like, no, we love virtual. This is great. Well, then I feel comfortable then saying, you know what? Again, because this is a board decision, I'm going to make the board decision after discussing with my, you know, my peers on the board and us understanding now what the, the township, you know, the people of the community want and what we want. What can we do now moving forward? I just like to make decisions with inform with information. And I think that this is important information because a lot of, I mean, if we're talking about accessibility, we're talking about visibility and transparency, let's see what people really feel like. And of course, again, who answers the survey? It may only be the people that are on this, on this uh, meeting virtually. Uh, if you go and look at the workshop sessions, there are much, it's a much larger group as compared to the voting sessions. So let's see, you know, truly what the climate is. And I think that it may open up the minds of others and may on, honestly provide closure for others as well. You know, to say, you know what, let's let this ride. You know, we're going to keep going in the same direction. It seems to be positive and it works. Or we could say, you know what, what we thought worked for us doesn't seem to work for the community. They don't want that. You know, I, I just am curious, like Bob said, it doesn't have to be the end all be all. It's just another piece of information that'll provide me with a bit more um, in, you know, clarity and how I want to vote as a board member. I, I would like to speak to a couple things. Um, I think it's important to understand that unless it's going to be a really scientifically put together kind of survey, you're only going to get responses to what you're asking. Yeah, that's always what happens. And it becomes skewed for a number of different reasons. You're only going to hear from those people. And if we say we hear from 40 people, is that do they represent 400 people? Or do they represent 4000 people in the community? So I think the idea of reaching out to the community is something I'm very much in favor of. But I think it shouldn't be limited to this issue, because I think this issue is something that eventually will go away. But there's other input we might want to get from the community um, that is beyond this, you know, on different other topics. And that I think it would be more helpful to reach out to the community with, you know, with a plate rather than one little dish of here. Here's something we want your input on. And virtually, unless you're going to create criteria before that it's majority rules, you know, you, you always have to be, you know, aware of a minority. You can't, you, you know, that's part of a problem we have is that it, it can't be both ways. You can't have majority rules and minority rules, you know, and this, the idea of, I, I was a, until Vera changed her mind, I had agreed with Vera and with Kat has said about that it's going to be skewed information. We want information. It might be better having qualitative information than quantitative information, if, if, if you understand what I'm saying, not just about this one issue. We're, that, just, we're just, we're just okay, asking, okay. we're just asking what the people who I think there's what 20 some people on here right now. Right. I, I, you know, yeah. again, uh, th that's that's more than would come to a normal meeting. 
in person. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. So, uh, so that's why if it comes it, back saying we should only be in person, so it's like asking I, the I, input. I I think we can look at the results yeah. and know whether and, and know whether it's a uh, a fixed poll, you know, where somebody, you know, where the people there's there's forty people say no, we went in person, and they and they they vote. I, I you know, honestly, I, I think we're making a mountain out of something. It's so just all we're doing is asking, and the public will see that we're reaching out to them. And try and trying to get them involved in what's going on in our schools, and that's. I, I agree. That's that's why I'm saying that just for a one-off kind of a uh, here. We, we this, can do this. In, in this. That's why we're elected to be officials. Make these I, decisions. Harry, Harry, I know mean, that. Harry, I'm well aware of that. When I was on township committee, I'm sure I voted probably for something that the majority of the people didn't want, but it was what I felt was important for Delanco. I understand. I just, I was surprised with the number of people who talked to me and said, hey, they like the in-person or they like this virtual uh, meeting idea. And it's it seems that convenience is one of the big factors. And we're trying to get the people involved and on our side to try and figure out how we can get out of our financial situation and how we can improve the, you know, the schools, the, the, uh, the atmosphere right now that the, that the students are suffering under and the teachers are suffering under and the administration suffering under. I mean, it's putting a tremendous strain and I think we need to try and reach out and, and just, you know, we're, we're asking a question. We're not saying we're gonna abide by, you know, what the majority of, the, of them are saying. We're gonna take that information and then make a decision. I, and, I understand that, Bob. And I, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm saying it needs to be more than just this one issue. Oh, I, I, I don't disagree. This can be just a start. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Let's I'm see saying how successful this is. The public. Okay. It, I, you know, I, I think the strategy makes sense to me. That's a logical way to go about it. And it's sequential and it's taking a step. But I'd hate like heck to put out something with the people's illusion that um, okay, we have input and they didn't do what we wanted them to do, or they didn't do what I wanted them to do. We can also put that disclaimer, that. we can put that disclaimer on the survey notations that this is not an, a, you know. Just still not understanding. Our, our intention, to me, unless our intention is to keep, is to do that for every issue at, at this point, when we reach out, we ought to let them know. Do you know there's a financial <clears throat> crisis? know what, what the situation is do you know the what, what difficulties students have had do you understand that we may be underfunded you you know that's what i think is what i'm getting at that it, it's um and they're they're woven together they're they're woven together when you communicate with the public you, you got to be both straightforward and uh, it, it needs to be useful information for the board otherwise it's wasting our time as well as their time well i don't think it's wasting my time to find out you know what no, people no, think no, what I, I, I may not agree with them but i don't uh, mm -hmm. you know i want to know what they're thinking um yeah. forgive, me for, forgive me for interrupting if i could just suggest i've been listening to the conversation it's been a, a pretty thorough conversation pretty spirited conversation um, might I suggest um, to just stay on task? Maybe you do a quick yes or no vote, not official, it can be a straw vote on whether or not you do a survey. And then if you decide to do a survey, do a quick yes or no vote on how broad that survey should be or what questions you want to focus on. Um, because you're, it, it, it just, it, not to, um, I, I don't want to stifle conversation or debate. That's the board's role. But we're hearing some of the same things over and over again. And, and perhaps to move your conversation forward, now is a good time to take everybody's temperature. Yeah, I can do that. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. 
Steve, what is your thought? Do you want to do the survey or not? Uh, oh, uh, well, uh, no, I don't think the survey is necessary. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm sorry I caught you off guard. <laughs> We're the first one in my yeah, corner. Oh, Bob has switched spots. Everyone's kind of moved around. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Bob, you're next. Uh, I'm, I'm for the survey. Okay, yes. Catherine. Um, I feel on the fence about it now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to come back to you? Uh, Order. I mean, sure. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Come back to me. Harry, you're next. Yeah, I I don't want this survey, but I do want surveys. Okay, that's a no. But okay. in the future, <laughs> Cameron. Cameron. Yeah, it's a no. It's a no. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Cameron? Uh, no, I I don't really think we need it. All right, cool. Uh, Vera, Vera. Harry, no to this survey, but in the future, yes for different kind of survey. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Catherine? <laughs> I'm going to say... You flip a quarter yet? <laughs> no, I'm going to say... I'm going to say uh, no, only because... You want to go with the majority? No, only because, yeah, thanks, Harry. That's real sweet. Um, no, only because I think that as far as like the amount of time and resources we're going to spend on this and the value it's going to bring to us is is just not aligned for me. But I am very pro bringing in the voice of the public. Awesome. Thank you. I would have voted yes, but the majority has spoken. So we will not send a survey. I, I believe I got everything. Um, yes, I got everyone. Cause that was a five to two vote, five no's, two yeses. So that is perfectly fine. Now, how about a yes or no? Are we going to be virtual or are we going to be hybrid? Steven. Uh, I don't think hybrid is actually on the table, so. I meant hybrid meaning virtual workshop in person voting. Mm -hmm. And that's my definition right. of hybrid. Yeah. So I would vote to stay on Zoom for both meetings. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bob. I'm going to vote uh, to uh, stay with the Zoom meetings. Got it. Catherine? Uh, can you come back? No, I'm just kidding. Um, can, <laughs> I want virtual, please. You got it. Uh, Harry? Uh, virtual for, for the... Uh, work session and if the majority you know if we vote for the um to go to go back for the voting i'm okay with that but i would say we should stay virtually virtually for the work session and either way for the voting for me <laughs> okay um cameron I'd personally like to see us in person for the voting session. Vera? Zoom for both. Got it. I would have been for uh, the hybrid version. So that is one, two, three, four, five. Well, Harry was split. So it was like a four to three vote. So majority still maintains and we will stay virtual then moving forward and we can revisit this. Uh, Stephen, when is the best time again to revisit this? Because I know you like to do these in three month allotments. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. So at a reorganization meeting in January, so obviously I'll repost for the January re-advertise. Uh, or I said that wrong, for December. I'll re-advertise for December. For January, you you approve the annual posting. Ideally, you do one one advertisement all year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with COVID, we've done several. Um, I, I would recommend. My personal opinion is, what's going to change now between December and March or April? I mean, I've, I've, I, just just from my just from my four months of being on the board or being with you it seems like the conversation has been kind of the same. And mm -hmm. I personally would recommend, why don't we at least, can we, when we advertise for the annual meeting in January for reorg, 
why don't we at least commit till end of June? And we visit it for six months and then we visit for another six months. That way we're not spending, I mean, every time we advertise, that's 40 bucks a paper, that's 80 bucks. Uh, it's, it's 100, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just wasted money to be very honest. I know it's, I know it's not that much money, but it's just wasted. Mm-hmm. So, so, okay. I, so if that's okay with you, I would post, I, when I do, I'll re-change, I'll re-change December. And then when we do the reorg meeting, I'll put the same schedule through June. I'll put it the whole way and we always change our mind halfway through if you want. Okay. That makes sense. Is everybody in agreement yeah. with that decision? Yes. Uh, yeah. Hey, Eve, you're saying Zoom for everything through June? I'm going to put Zoom for everything through the whole year, but I say let's revisit it in June, June. or actually by May if we want to change up halfway through the year for the, the next I, I get the sense that the board's going to want to revisit it sooner, though. I, I don't agree. That's why I'm saying. I don't yeah. see uh, anything we'll, changing we'll, for we'll, us, though. We'll, As Steve Stephen pointed out, there's no better. hybrid option coming down the line, like technology wise. I so. agree. I agree, but we also have three board members that feel very strongly about in person, and and for us to have them table their opinions for six months is a pretty long time. Yeah, it would. I, I mean, I think that we should open it up whether we're going to table it for six months. But I'm just saying, my in my sense, nothing will change. So. Well, we can always advertise for six months and then we come to a different decision in March and then re-advertise. So, to me, it's six months is just about. Yeah, sticking with the default and saving money potentially. Well, I'm going to advertise the whole year, as what you know, as what every board does. But it gets changed, and we've been changing it um, every time we change our, you know, decisions made. So, what I'm just saying is, let's at least try to commit for a more extended period of time. That way, we're not constantly re-upping it and changing the advertisement. How about can we table this until March then? And then, because also we have three new board members that will be joining our team, mm -hmm. and we'll give them the opportunity to be part of the discussion and maybe the decisions, you know, moving forward as well to help them feel like, you know, that way they'll have their feet wet a little bit, you know, they'll have an idea of how the process goes and then give them an opportunity to have a voice as well as a board member. Yeah. March affair, I know that kind of goes against everything you just said, Steve, <laughs> but is that a possibility? <laughs> Well, I mean, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I just would like to give those coming onto the board an opportunity to have a voice as well on this, on this, um, at least, you know, agenda item, we'll call it. The only other thing, I, since you, since you brought up reorganization, and Joe, I don't mean to bring this up without you knowing, Joe and I are going to be meeting about the reorganization meeting uh, upcoming, we're, we're, you know, Joe and I meet every day pretty much, but anyhow, one thing that's come up with the calendar, because I have to build the calendar for next for the next year, is we went to the second and third day of the week. Second, I'm sorry, second and third Wednesdays of the month for the Wednesdays or for the uh, work session and the regular meeting. One one thing that's come up with the business office, one thing that's giving us a uh, giving us an issue is the bills don't get sent out until the, the approval. And it used to be on the second Wednesday. So we're getting a lot of vendors harassing us over that payment. So one idea was, could we move it to the first and second Wednesday? If there's, there's any objections or anything in the town that, that would obstruct us from doing that. And the one thing that comes to mind is the, the history board meets on the first Wednesday and I'm, I'm a member of that. Yeah, and that's fine. We'll keep on this. No, that's, no not an issue. Not, yeah. That's it. done. And there's so. three more three more new members that might have that we should consider as well. They may have different conflicts that we're not unaware of at this time. Well, we always set the agenda on reorg. So, I mean, if, if I won't change it, then I just will yeah. set, we'll set the schedule. And I was like, one board member had a conflict. That was it. I mean, it wasn't, here's what it is. So, thank you. No problem. Okay, so then do you, does the board feel comfortable re with revisiting this in March so that it gives our new board members the ability to have a voice on this subject? Yes, I'm, I'm okay. comfortable. All right, I'm comfortable with it as well. I mean, if anybody opposes that, just speak up and then we can make note of it. But I, I think that seems fair. All right, Great. thank you. Um, 
All right, that seems to be a bunch of old business. Do we have anything for new business? I, Harry, you had sent um, an email to Joe and I about Leap, and you yeah. thought that would be a good time to discuss it now in new business. Yes, um, I, I've been saying for a while that you know there's supposed to be money coming through to, to look at the county level for ways to share services and reorganize and realign. And the end of October, that was signed into law. And basically, each county um, needs to look at itself. And we should be involved with that as much as we can in ways that supposedly there's a the county would hire someone for a year to be in a position to, to be looking at ways that county districts could realign, could uh, use shared services in a much more concentrated way. And at one point, they even talked about having that person that they hired working with someone from the county that was experienced with the county's educational doing so that that person would not be just trying to get up the speed of what's going on by the time the year ends. So that is going on that we need to look at things, especially because we're the size district that we are. We keep seeing some of the same problems and other neighboring districts have some of the same problems, providing ESL, providing certain specific courses. And I think it's also would behoove us to look at as a board, and we'll have new board members as well, uh, where do we go forward? What do we do as a district? Do we, uh, do we build a new school building? Do we add on to new school building or to our old school buildings? Do we organize in this area along the river, you know, as a, and say, hey, we need a state-of-the-art middle school a lot of the problems that we have in Delanco seem to be at that middle school level, which is an unusual having problems at middle school, but maybe there's a better way regionally to, to deal with that so that um, students are getting better prepared for wherever they're going to their secondary schools, whether it be you know Riverside or BCIT from our district or some of the other sending districts along the the, the corridor here from Elmira basically to Burlington City. And there's, you know, we may need to look at new options, look at um, things like, uh, um, was it Northern Burlington? They just have a whole brand new secondary school system. So, you know, where they've added all kinds of uh, both vocational programs, I believe, from agriculture to other technologies. So it's, it's time for us to to look what we can do. So um, I've already in the past been approved to look out the county. I'd like to reach out to uh, the county how we can best utilize what's going on, how we can share in that in some way. So I've asked the board to just um, you know, I, I would uh, check with Ray Marini, see what's going on, try to find out how we can get best situated in that, as well as, you know, representing the, the county for the School Boards Association, not just Delanco, but what in this area, what can we use using the VOTEC? Um, you know, uh, we've talked about that. I've talked about that for the last couple of years with their superintendent about getting secondary academies over to this part of the, the county, vocational kinds of testing, et cetera. So it may be that opportunity we've been looking for is now law and we can pursue it differently. So Those are just like new business. Yeah, no, it's great, Harry. And I appreciate, appreciate that. Does our board support Harry in going out and researching this a bit more in regards to additional funding via LEAP. Is that something we support him in doing? Yes. Yes. I do. Yes. 
I have a question about it, actually. Sure. Harry, is the um, the special ed program that we're putting together something that other towns would then use as a shared service, mm -hmm. potentially? It could be that that yeah, that could be beneficial. Here's what we're offering in Lanco, and they can say in Riverside, here's what we're offering. Mm -hmm. Riverton can say, hey, we're now doing this and say, well, wait a minute. Why don't we figure out how to work together differently to, to make it the programs that are needed? Maybe it's uh, getting a regional child study team so that we don't have bits and pieces that every everyone has one child study team for this whole area and it becomes more coordinated or the middle school curriculum becomes similar so that any of those students that are going on to either BCIT or their home schools are better prepared and that it's an inter, kind of an interchangeable um, you know state approved curriculum and that we can have more variety that you know we can have a program here that all the other sending districts so it's it's an exciting kind of proposition i i don't really know where it'll lead i don't think anyone does but it's an it's a the opportunity we've been looking for to try and figure out how we can share services and get some of the things that we've been deficient in that because of our size because of the economic you know scale of uh our situation. So that's, you know, I, I, that's the best way I can answer you right now, Kat. So Harry and for the board, I, I have a document from the Department of Community Affairs. It's for fiscal year 2022. It is the new information that Harry's talking about. I can just share that document with the full board so that everybody knows what's going on with this. And I mentioned the Department of Community Affairs because that's the governing for this that it's not the department of ed it's not it's not it's not anything local to the burlington county only it is department of community affairs and they have a whole separate set of rules when it comes to what they do so also harry i know you mentioned the challenges at the middle school and i just i want to take a moment to thank our middle school teachers and our new middle school principal barry Sade. peg harper was just on here earlier as as one of our middle school teachers and all the teachers at walnut for doing what they're doing for our students. So even though there are challenges, uh, we have a great team of teachers that are working hard and doing their very best for our students. And that's why, you know, I know you had mentioned other options. I mean, when it comes to this topic of regionalization, shared services and all of that, I mean, of course, districts have to keep these topics on the table for consideration. I just don't want there to be any alarm uh, from the Walnut team or anything, it, believing that we're we're full steam ahead with any kind of plan, it, it's not. It's it's just an it's no, there, there is considerations is. when it comes to regionalization and uh, it's it, there's there's actually no plan in the works for our district. It's just ideas that, of course, the state wants us to consider. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Harry. So it sounds like the. You have something to do, some information to gather for us, and we look forward to hearing the information about the information. Does anybody else have anything else they want to bring up in new business before I move on? Excellent. Budget and finance. I am requesting a motion to approve the following line items. The submission of the ARP grant application for the 2021-2022 school year in the amount of ESSER. 641,316 accelerated learning coaching and educator support grant in of 54 51,644 evidence based summer learning and enrichment activities grant 40,000 evidence based comprehensive beyond the school day activities grant 40,000 and NJTSS mental health support staffing grant of 88,501 I need a motion motion second Okay, Cameron motioned and Bob second. Uh, this is a roll call vote, please. Uh, Mr. Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Arno. No, no, I was going to Mr. Calaguire and I realized he's not here. Mr. Arno. Yes. Mr. Dovey. Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Yes. 
Miss Carmen Eugene. Yes. Mr. Litwack. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Ms. Teresa Chikili. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. All right, public comment on non-agenda items. Do we have any public comment on a non-agenda item? I see uh, Ms. Foley has her hand up. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, so um, I live at 14 Time and Circle, and I'm kind of going to go back two hours. I just wanted to thank Mr. Burns for his presentation on the budget um, every month. It's just nice to see such a, um, I want to say easy to read. Obviously, I'm not anywhere fluent or familiar with finance or anything like that. But as someone who's not, I can understand it. And he explains it in such nice detail that I really do appreciate his effort and his time that he puts on that. I think it's been a nice change to the board. And just like I said, obviously, I'm not a member. I'm not, you know, good in that area, but I think it's nice to see where the money is going and explained and kind of, I love the way that Mr. Burns has a plan and ideas moving forward, not just thinking about today, thinking about the future. So I appreciate that, um, what he's bringing to the table and what he's offering to the board and the community. And um, my second quick comment, and obviously I know my opinion doesn't matter on the um, in-person or continuing with the Zoom format for the public. Um, we obviously live in Delanco and if we go back into person, my husband and I will go back to taking turns to attending the meeting just because we really do value education is in priority. So one of us will try our best to be there. Um, the Zoom is has been very convenient simply because, you know, we can um, juggle our kids and work and laundry and, you know, all different sorts mm -hmm. of things. Um, so it is very convenient. I do appreciate that it is an option. One thing that I did want to mention is, um, I teach in a different district and, you know, it's a good half hour, 45 minutes away. And I am grateful that my district that I teach in has the hybrid option. They have the equipment and everything, but it's nice that as a teacher, I still can be active and listen to the meetings. Um, and I don't have to be there in person because, you know, they end at nine o'clock, it's a half hour drive home. I leave the house at seven. So it just makes for a honestly long day. And I just honestly couldn't I would try to pick one or two a year to go to, but I've been attending them faithfully like I have been attending Delanco's. So just for our teachers and um, our administrators and anybody else who doesn't live in Delanco, you know, it's a long day for them. So I just wanted to put that little piece out there. Obviously, it's the board decision. And, um, you know, I do love the idea of being back in person for everybody. But I think, you know, when we weigh the pros and the cons, um, I don't necessarily know it's a right or a wrong decision, but it's just something else I wanted to you know, share for those other members that don't live in Delanco. So as always, thank you all for all that you do in your time and for serving our children. And um, I can't thank you enough. So thank you for letting me talk and thank you and have a good night. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak at this time? All right. If not, I will close that aspect of the agenda. Executive session. Joe, I do believe that you wanted to go into executive session just briefly to discuss uh, an issue or an item. Um, for the goals, we were going to discuss them next week, um, but there is a topic that I know board members were curious about that is a confidential topic that uh, if, if the board wishes to go into executive to discuss it, uh, the board has received uh, three emails over the past week about this topic. So, just to Board want to go into executive session to discuss. I, yeah. I'm, I don't I don't think I need to go into I following the emails I th and then, you know, discussing it next week. Okay, We can discuss it next week if that's what the majority feels. Steve, are you where do you stand with that? Are you comfortable with waiting till next week to have more in depth discussion? I'm fine with that. You know, the emails have been enough so far. But Excellent. Whatever y'all want. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, Bob, I almost jumped to you again because again, you're on here twice. Catherine, uh, oh my God. <laughs> Catherine. Uh, are, there, like, are there additional updates or is all the information that we have in the emails already? I, I would only share the same information you already have. It was just an opportunity to clarify just in case there were other questions. No, I think that uh, your documentation has been very clear. So thank you. Great. Harry? I think we might have a need to go into executive session. So I would say to do it now, and then we can always continue it next week if we, and it seemed like there was a need for it to clarify some issues for the board is what it seemed like to me. I understand what Joe is saying, 
but it, it, the meeting wouldn't be for those who do understand it. It might be for those who don't understand it, who might be in a minority. Cameron? Uh, I feel we can discuss this more thoroughly if need be at next week's meeting. Uh, I have also been able to follow along with Joe's emails pretty well, and I'm sure if there's any more pressing updates in the next uh, seven days, I'm sure we'll get emails at various times about them. Okay, and Vera, how do you feel? I do want to discuss something, but my brain is fried right now, so I'm not, so if we discuss it, it's not going to sink in, you know what I mean? So might as well mm -hmm. next meeting. Okay, so the majority feels comfortable with tabling discussions until next week, and we can discuss, you know, the district goals and this other issue as well in executive session next week. I think that that's a, a good place to end this evening, and I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Uh, before before you do, the I know you got the. I just, if I may, uh, I'd just like to thank um, Cameron Jenkins for his service. I'm glad that he's on there tonight. He's uh, it's been nice watching you grow into a no a wonderful young know. citizen and no uh, representing the, the issues that you think are important. And it's not been nice the way you've really um, worked hard. So it's good to see and your efforts will be missed. Uh, also Phil and, and Vince as they'll be leaving the board soon. And also to welcome the three new board members and congratulations and working with people. Um, and hopefully it'll, we'll have new insights and new points of view and new energy and and hardworking new board members. So that's all I wanted to say before we adjourned. I think it's important to recognize the board members um, as well for their efforts as our teachers and our administrators. It's one team, so. Absolutely. Thank you, Harry. Awesome. I just want to point out, Harry, the election results aren't final. They still have a ton of, I guess, um, uh, I'm still president. Challenge. I'm still yeah. president. Is that what you're trying to tell me? There are, could be. <laughs> no, oh, no, no. The uh, oh, can, the county the county hasn't certified the uh, results. Thank you, Bob. The results Say that to the board okay. that once it's certified, well, it, I will inform the board uh, of the results. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe I was premature. <laughs> hey. That's all right. We can revisit this again once there's <laughs> so it's all good. Okay. Uh, request a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Bob and Steve. <laughs> Meeting is over. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see everyone. I just want to know one thing. I see Cameron's got his Christmas decorations up already. That is just wild. How did Athena? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He literally you know was out of town. Way? I don't know. I, I, I wonder how. He, if everyone can just look and hopefully see the big pile of Christmas boxes right here in my living room. <laughs> my uh, well, she's now going to kill you for showing that on camera. <laughs> I'm sorry. You actually, you, you actually have to vote. You forgot to vote. Oh just do gosh. It okay. All in favor. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, All in favor. Uh, uh, I. I. Uh, abstain. Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you for bringing me back in. I appreciate it. So. No worries. You are free. Yeah. Everyone is Have free. A good night, everyone. Thank you. Good, good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>